Hi everybody and welcome to week 10 of Introduction to Research. So this week we are moving on to module 7 which is where we start looking at the first of two weeks where we're looking at uh, how to evaluate research. So this is obviously really important because you, if you're going to get a bit of research that someone else has done and learn from it and then perhaps apply something that you've learnt from it in your workplace, then you've got to be, to be really sure that the research that you're using as the basis for your decision making is really good research. Because not all research is good research and you want to be really sure that you're using the stuff that you can actually trust and verify. And one of the really important things about doing good research is that you, someone, you can, when you write it up, like you write a journal article perhaps about it or a report or a conference paper or something like that, that it's really important that you write within that paper how you came about to get the results that you did. So what your methods were, what your methodology was. That's where you start talking about all this stuff about the paradigms and the methodologies and the processes that you went through to get your data and then the processes that you went through to analyze your data. So all the stuff that we've been looking at up until now. So it's really important that that stuff's all written into the journal article or whatever it is that you're writing about your research. And it's really important that it's there so somebody else can pick this research up that you've done and see how you did it, see how you, you know, drew the line from this is what we wanted to know, this is what we found out and this is the process that we used in between and this is why it's reliable. It's also important for them to be able to um, repeat the research. So when you're doing some research and writing it up or if you're reading someone else's research, what you should be looking for is enough information that tells you how they did their research, how they decided that what, what the data that they'd found gave meaning to the question they were asking. So how reliable were the methods of analysis and do they give you enough information in writing up their research that allows you to repeat the research in your environment or your context. So that whole idea of reliability and repeatability is really important when you're putting research together, when you're writing it up or when you're looking at somebody else's research. That's something to look for in when you're in evaluating. So that's what we're looking at this week. And next week we go into a lot more detail as about these ideas and processes that we can use to help us evaluate research when this is important. So this is this week's uh, content here. There's actually not too much of it this week. There's only a couple of things to nick out and have a read. Most of it we're looking at um, how we evaluate research at a really broad sort of level. And it also looks this week, we also look at these ideas of um, you know, when you get a journal article and you as a end user of that journal article, you're reading this thing and how can you be sure that it's good research? Well, apart from looking for particular things, which is what we'll be looking at next week in particular, you can also be looking at whether that journal article is peer reviewed and if it's a scholarly journal. So there are a couple of ways you can do that, but the idea behind peer review is that Say if I do a piece of research, right, and I want to write it up and put it into a journal article. If I want to publish that in a really, you know, good quality journal that has a lot of respect in my industry, then I'll choose a journal that's peer reviewed. So that whole idea of peer review, if you don't know what that means, I'll just really quickly explain what it is. Peer review is when I write my research up, I submit it to the journal and say, hey guys, I've done this research could you publish it please in your journal? And they'll say, yep, thanks for that. What we'll do is we'll send it out to a couple of experts in the area that your journal article's roughly about. They'll have a look at it and they'll give us an opinion as to whether it's good enough to be in our journal. So that is the peer review process. And my work gets given to two peers, two of my peers who are, um, people who are meant to know enough about what I've written about to be able to judge its quality and its reliability. So that then what they'll do is they'll read through it, they get you know a couple of months usually to read through my research and then they'll make comments on it. So they might write back to the editor of the journal I'm trying to get published in, they might say yep this is brilliant, 
she's fantastic. The research is really, really good. It's written up clearly and it fits well within the goals of your journal. Publish this article now. Or they might write back and say, oh, this is pretty good. I reckon it would be really nice if we could publish this, but there's still some gaps in the methodology or the author hasn't explained well how they've come to the findings that they've come to. So while this looks like it should be good for the journal, it's not quite ready yet. So then it comes back to me as an author and I get these comments and feedback and then I have a choice. I can either make those changes and then resubmit it or I can take it away and go somewhere else or not publish it at all. So that's the peer review process <clears throat> and it's an interesting process because it, um, as an author I don't know who's reviewing my work and when a peer reviewer gets a piece of research to review they don't know who the author is. So it's all meant to be fair and open about um, sort of anonymity so there's no bias and there's you know no one can you know be mean to someone they don't like by giving a really bad review for their research so that's called double blind peer reviewing so it's double blind in that I can't see who the reviewers are and the reviewers can't see who the author is so in both directions we're blinded it's a um, it's an interesting process it's not always reliable and sometimes it's sort of daft because like I publish in the area of libraries in prisons. So you can be pretty sure if someone is given an article by an anonymous author that's about prison libraries, they're going to know it's me because no one else is writing in that area really. So in some ways it's sort of a bit of a false blindness, but it's sort of one of the best systems that we've got at the moment. And it's also unreliable in that um, one reviewer can say this is rubbish this should be put in the bin and the other reviewer can say this is fantastic you should publish this now <clears throat> and then both of these reviews come back to the author and the author goes well what do I do with that and the publisher's going well what do I do with that do I publish this thing or is it rubbish I don't know so it's not uncommon for you to get really divergent uh, reviews for a piece of work that you've written but the point of telling you all this is that this is one way of assuring that if something is published in a peer review journal, someone has already evaluated this research. Someone's already looked at it and said, yeah, this is good. This was well, the research is well done. The process is really transparent and clear. We can see what they did, what their methods were. We can see that the findings are reasonable based on the data they gathered and the processes that they went through to analyze it. So, yep, let's publish it. So that whole step of evaluation has been done for you. So that's um, for you as students looking for, or as practitioners looking for uh, peer reviewed research will assure you that the quality of the data that you're given within those journal articles is really good. The quality of the research is good. So that's one way of evaluating research. Always stick with the peer reviewed stuff and you can't go too wrong. Now further into this uh, process here, oh this is what we're talking about double blind review here. So this is this week's page. There's also journals themselves have a hierarchy of quality and within every industry there are sort of like the top journals that academics like to publish in because it gives them a good status and there are um, sort of lesser tiered journals as well that are also really good but they don't have the sort of you know the, the shiny um, reputation. Uh, so if you wanted to look at there are some ways you can look at uh, where a journal sits which individual journal title sits within that sort of hierarchy and in theory the really top hierarchy journals are going to have better quality research than perhaps the, the lower hierarchy journals. Not always the case but again it's an imperfect measure but it's one of the only ways we've got of sort of uh, trying to distinguish the quality of research that gets done. So have a read of that. Um, now this is this section here, evaluation tools, and this is a six step process. And this is what next week is based on. So we're going to go, this is just a real uh, brief run through of what each of those six steps are. Next week, we'll be looking at each of those six steps in more detail. So for now, just read through it, um, just as a little introduction to that evaluation method. 
and um, there's something else there for you to read as well. So not too much to do this week, um, but just to start getting your head around the whole idea of evaluating research because that is directly related to your final assessment and um, therefore it's worth putting some headspace into. But it's also important for you in, in the workplace being able to judge the quality of research by evaluating it using these six steps in this case. There are other, other uh, frameworks as well that you could use, but we look at this six step one because it's quite a good one. So I think that's it for this week. Um, of course, your uh, online test is going to turn itself off tonight. So if you haven't done that already, and I think most of you have actually done it already, if you haven't done it already, jump in now. Uh, you've got until midnight or 11.59 tonight to get that done. So good luck with it. And I'll be marking those over the next few days and I'll get them back to you as soon as I can. So I hope you enjoy this week's content and I'll see you soon. Bye.